So GameWorks. GameWorks is NVIDIA's developer platform. It's our way to push the limits of gaming on all the platforms that gamers care about. Windows, Android, Cloud, you name it. And there's three main pillars of the GameWorks program. Three core pieces upon which this platform is built. Um, the first, of course, is the people. We are lucky to have the world's best team focused on games and game technology. The GameWorks research team is about 300 people. They are, many of them, PhDs, world-class experts in their domain, um, visual effects and artists, engineers, visual engineers and artists that are at the intersection of art and science. These people have to develop algorithms and libraries and technology that produce amazing visuals and amazing gameplay, at the same time having to solve for incredibly complex technical challenges. And all of that needs to have an artistic feel to it. Graphics is an incredibly difficult field in that it's science and engineering and art. And people who have that skill set are really, really rare. And we have 300 of the world's best. And we use those people to help game developers create those next generation experiences. We take a lot of that learning and we embody it in the GameWorks library. It is our collection of tools, SDKs, technologies, algorithm, uh, engines, source code, technology that we provide to game developers that they can use and, and ride on to bring things to the next level. And we're gonna walk you through that in quite a bit of detail and you're gonna hear about three new technologies that are part of the GameWorks library. Um, and then of course in developer tools um, with the Nsight IDE and standalone debuggers, profilers, and utilities, we've got the world's best tool platform for doing graphics and game development. You're gonna see some demos of that today, including some new things there as well. So, you know, we got, we've got a, a, lot, a, a lot of stuff to show you, and I, I don't wanna spend too much time talking because there's a whole bunch of great demos, so let's uh, kinda get into it. So, what's in the GameWorks library? There's six major components in the GameWorks library. These are kind of the major sections uh, that we uh, deposit our knowledge into so that the industry can leverage that to advance the state of the art. The Visual Effects SDK, these are uh, turnkey solutions to solve complex visual problems. Um, they are typically delivered as a, as with an API that developers program to, and these would be um, tools and technologies that are producing complex visual effects. For, you know, as an example, and we'll get to this, WaveWorks would be an example of a Visual Effects SDK piece. The graphics library is kind of some foundational material. These are things like tutorials, libraries, samples, documentation, sample code, um, things that are the fundamental building blocks of building a great game, and graphics are reposited there. PhysX SDK, you guys are familiar with, we've been building that for quite a number of years. That was originally uh, part of AGEA. We've integrated into NVIDIA, we continue to invest in that. It's cross-platform, it's the most popular physics engine on the planet. More than 500 games have uh, integrated it, and it's, it literally exists on any platform that a game developer cares about, from phones to consoles to PCs to cloud. It's everywhere. Our core SDK includes a bunch of foundation technologies for using GeForce and other platforms. Uh, you may have heard of things called like NVSI and things like that. These live in our core SDK, and these are things that can take specific advantage of NVIDIA platform features, um, and let developers get um, kind of a, a, the, uh, the full benefit out of uh, NVIDIA. The Game Compute Library is kind of analogous to the Graphics Library. Everything that the Graphics Library is for graphics, the Compute Library is for compute. Source code, documentation, tutorials, you know, the, the fundamental building blocks of understanding how to do computing. Uh, and then Optics. Optics is an SDK for building ray tracing engines. Um, it's a framework upon which developers can use to build their own renderers um, and create amazing visuals with them. So let's kind of dive into one of these, um, and this would be developer tools. We have an enormous investment in developer tools. Um, you probably have heard of Insight. That's our IDE. Um, that's actually a screenshot that you see up there. Um, that's Insight. Really the way to think about it is we cover all the major uh, functions that a developer needs uh, for graphics uh, and on other platforms, even including CPU uh, and graphics simultaneous debugging and profiling. So we have a, an IDE and a standalone environment so you can build and say Visual Studio, the common environment for developers to work in. You can debug your code to make sure that the issues that you've, you've written in, you can figure out and write out. Uh, profiling, so you can get the most performance out of the game. So this would be things like, you know, if I'm vertex shader bound or fragment shader has, you know, extra cycles, you can tune it down to the, to the nth degree. 
And this exists across all the major API platforms, DirectX, OpenGL, ES, CUDA, Android, Windows, you name it, we've got tools that cover all the major platforms and all the major APIs, both integrated and standalone tools. So what you're gonna see, in fact, um, is a demo that shows kind of the breadth of this. So let's go ahead and go to the demo. And what Sebastian's got running here um, is uh, one of our uh, Visual Effects SDK examples. This is Spaceworks. You guys have probably seen this before. Um, so this is our digital IRA here. Now what he's running here is uh, Spaceworks running on a PC. Um, and he's uh, going to be attaching insight to it to do some debugging and profiling. So let's go ahead and hand it over to Sebastian here. Thanks, Tony. So here I'm going to demonstrate to you uh, basically how to peel uh, a framework of rendering in, uh, in Faceworks, which is a uh, technology demo for, um, for facial rendering and, and animation. So here basically by scrubbing through the frame uh, using the head of display, I can essentially debug uh, this, this frame one draw call at a time and understand uh, you know, where things are happening and how they're happening. So if I were to have a bug, for example, in my, uh, in my subsurface uh, scattering shader here, I can easily uh, focus on it, uh, go into Visual Studio, this is Visual Studio 2012, and easily basically dissect the render states and the resources that are bound to this particular draw call in order to, to, uh, to understand what's going on here. Uh, as an example, I can quickly uh, focus on the frame buffer here, bring basically the data for the frame buffer, and I can inspect uh, the, uh, the pixels value here by hovering my mouse over uh, the various uh, pixels. And you will see basically the RGB value being updated um, uh, in this section here, where those are actually floating point values because this is HDR rendering uh, for, for the, uh, the subsurface scattering. Now what uh, uh, is interesting is that this particular solution is um, available on our next generation TechWrap platform, uh, which is called Logan, and I'm go we're going to switch to. Uh, so if you guys, can I get my mic back? Yeah, oh, Allison. So if you guys haven't seen it, this is FaceWorks, which is one of those core Visual Effects SDK libraries running on Project Logan. If you're not familiar with Project Logan, that's one of our next generation Tegra SOCs. Project Logan implements the full Kepler GPU architecture as well as a full support for OpenGL. So this is Faceworks running on a Logan dev kit, which is uh, in a break, you can come check it out here. It's a little uh, Tegra-based SOC, runs in single digit watts, and it's Faceworks running on Logan. So that's pretty cool. And what, <laughs> we haven't seen it, that's pretty awesome. Logan's pretty exciting because it's really going to usher in kind of the next level, so to speak, for, for mobile technology because really it brings Kepler, our core GeForce architecture, to mobile. And we can bring things like Faceworks to mobile as well. But this is not just a Faceworks running on Logan demo. If you want to develop next generation graphics for a mobile platform, you actually need to have tools that work with them. So how are we going to deal with that, Sebastian? Well, we offer a we offer a variety of solutions on Windows, Linux, and OS X to be able to allow developers to get connected to their Android device and do basically debugging. So, All right, so uh, next piece, PhysX. So you guys are probably familiar with PhysX. It's our physics SDK. It's the most popular physics SDK on the planet. It's used by hundreds of games, more than 500 games shipped with it. Um, simulation driven effects, things like turbulence or rigid bodies, some of the core mechanics that affect the gameplay. Um, it's integrated into pretty much all the major engines, so Unity and Unreal Engine, for example, some of probably the two most successful or widely adopted engines. Their physics system, the core physics system that drives Unreal Engine and Unity, is PhysX. Uh, and you're going to see some of that integration here in a second. It's on pretty much every platform you've ever heard of, um, every major console, all the mobile platforms, all the PC platforms. It's on Linux, it's on Mac, it's, it's, it's everywhere. We have PhysX everywhere. Um, and we have probably the best authoring tools for physics. In fact, we've actually had some, uh, some partners of ours want to switch to physics, if for nothing else, because our tools for doing authoring are, are really that great. So um, it covers a wide variety of simulation domains, um, things like destruction, infer, um, clothing, core rigid bodies, GPU accelerated particles, 
turbulence for simulation of fluid-like effects, um, actual fluid simulations for things like waves and water, um, a, a wide range of effects. We're going to just show you, uh, you know, a little example of that, which is some of the physics effects that you're going to see later today uh, with Batman. We're going to actually show you how some of those are authored. So what we're going to show you, in fact, is doing some turbulence authoring right inside of Unreal Engine, right inside of the editor. And this shows you how integrated PhysX is in the authoring pipeline for game developers. So let's go ahead and switch over to Jem's demo here. Thanks, Tom. Oh, you already did. Thanks, Thanks Take it away. Yeah. My mic's on. Yes. Um, so uh, as Tony said, we're, uh, we have deep integration inside um, all the major in engines, including, uh, of course, the Unreal Engine. <laughs> and what we're going to show you here is uh, this is a simple level we've designed just to, to show off the effect. Um, where we have a, a little uh, physics particle emitter on the ground here inside of this, um, inside of this little uh, object on the ground. And uh, we're going to start with this simple scene where you've got these kind of boring particles. Um, they are actually, uh, there is a bit of physics going on here in that there's interactions. Um, but as you can see, the actual, what, what's, what's happening in terms of um, actual physical uh, effects here is just moving up at some constant velocity. So it's, it's kind of boring. Um, one of the things that we've integrated into a number of games, including Batman, uh, is this thing we call turbulence, which is a real fluid simulation, which is a much richer uh, and more interactive and interesting uh, simulation that you can, you can apply to, uh, to particles. Um, so what we have inside of uh, the Unreal Engine, and actually before I get into that, I want to show that, that this particle system that I just talked about is actually inside of the, um, it, it can actually be edited directly inside of the Unreal Engine. So you can, you can go in here, for example, you can open up these uh, different parameters that we have, and, uh, and you can play with, say you want to change the colors of this, of this, uh, of this physical simulation. You can go in there and, hey, let's make it really red. You know, you can do that. And it actually changes in real time. See, so you've added a red tint to it. All right, let's undo that and, um, and show you some, uh, some turbulence effects. See, this is not, I'm really doing this, as you can tell. So. Uh, okay, so, so, so as we said, let's make the simulation a little bit richer. So what we can do is we can actually move this, see this, this large grid we have here? It's actually a turbulence actor that you can place inside the scene. And, uh, and, and, and what, you, what, what that does is it actually applies uh, a, a, an actual turbulence fluid simulation, an Eulerian learning grid fluid simulation, to the particles that enter it. Right? So we have an emitter now emitting particles. Uh, there are no forces in the scene, so what we can do is that we can then add a, a jet to actually inject forces. And then you can run it. And as simple as that, all of a sudden, you've got a richer, richer interaction. Now, one thing that's missing, though, the rendering, there's no shadows, and there's no shadows within the, the smoke. So, so wouldn't that be cool? So what we, you can do, that this is also directly integrated inside of, uh, inside of the Unreal Engine, you can open up the, perimeter, the, the parameters for the, for the actual uh, emitter, say so cast opacity shadows, which is this new technique we call PSM, which is part of the, the, uh, the, the, the GameWorks library, which is a, a deep shadow mapping, particle shadow mapping effect. You can adjust some of these parameters um, because actually it turns out that this is uh, this this grid is a little bit larger than the default parameters allow for. So we can change these uh, the parameters of the shadow map, go right back into the into the into the, uh, into the level, and now you've got real shadows, and you can actually play with uh, and get real interesting turbulent effects. Just automatic. And so all these things are built directly into the Unreal Engine, and it's part of what we provide in the Physics SDK inside the GameWorks library. That's pretty cool stuff. So that, the, uh, the nice thing about that, of course, is that because they're integrated right into the core authoring pipeline of the engine, those are GPU physics tools and capabilities that are just inherent in the way game developers can develop. And you're starting to see that in that there's more and more games that are taking advantage of GPU physics. We had quite a few games this year ship, uh, both here and, and uh, internationally, that use GPU physics. Uh, turbulence is one of my particular favorites because when we first envisioned turbulence, we kind of envisioned it for these kinds of things, smoke, right, you know, kind of smoke effects and fog. We've had developers just go crazy doing amazing things with turbulence. You know, they, they've invented disintegration rays and explosions and all sorts of really cool effects with turbulence, which we didn't envision. And that's, that's really the best thing is when you've built some technology that allows the developers to, to kind of go crazy and get creative with it and do things that you never even thought of. Um, that's pretty cool. 
Now, <clears throat> one of the challenges, of course, with, with pretty much all physics simulation, and really the, the history of physical simulation, is that while you can build really cool simulation infrastructure for a wide variety of things, you can do SPH for fluid, you can do 3D volume simulations for, for things like smoke and turbulence, you can do GRBs for rigid bodies. A lot of times, a lot of those core algorithms um, aren't as elegantly integrated as you might like. And so combining some of those things can be sometimes complicated. Um, We've been you know, working on that for quite a while. And so one of the things we're announcing today, one of the new pieces of technology that is gonna be integrated into physics uh, next year um, is called Flex. We're really excited about this because it's a, a unified GPU physics system. Really for the first time ever, it's gonna provide a way for a wide variety of simulations, effects, to interact with each other. A unified solver supports two-way coupling so that Different simulations can influence each other. A fluid simulation can influence rigid bodies and vice versa. Um, shared collision detection between all of those, uh, that infrastructure. And the great thing about this, um, it turns out that this unified architecture happens to also be incredibly great for parallel implementation for GPUs. So it gets incredible benefit across parallel GPU architectures. Um, and it's gonna provide a, a really great building block to enable a huge new class of GPU accelerated physical effects and really complex cross simulation interaction. So let's take a look at some of the things that Flex can do. It's pretty, pretty crazy stuff. So the first thing I'll say is, you know, this is technology. It's gonna be integrated into physics sometimes next year. So this is the first time we've shown it. It's research, and because it's research, it's um, a little programmer arty. <laughs> um, but I think you'll, you'll agree that it's, it does some pretty cool stuff. So what gems are you, what gems doing here, these are um, you know, semi-rigid bodies. Um, so you get kind of the bouncy balls and they interact with each other and they kind of squish and compress. Typical rigid bodies don't tend to do that. So you get this kind of you know, bouncy ball kind of effect. So one of the nice properties about this is you can build shapes and objects that you classically couldn't build with some of the other primitives. You can build flexible, squishy things. So I mentioned that we have the ability to combine simulation infrastructure, and they have two-way coupling. So what we're gonna do now is combine a rigid body simulation with a fluid simulation. So you can see the rigid bodies, they interact with each other, they bounce into each other and collide. Now we're throwing in water and fluids, the water displaces the rigid bodies, the rigid bodies float around and splash around, they continue to collide into each other. And you can see this is super high performance, it runs super fast, the water's fast, the rigid bodies are fast, and all the rigid bodies kind of do the right thing. You know, they, they collide, they stack, they move around, they float, they splash. So this, this is kind of showing a couple of those effects, right? Two different classes of classic physical simulation, rigid bodies and fluids, interacting with each other in a truly seamless way. These kinds of things are uh, classically hard to do, but in the, in the new flex system, they're just, they just all kind of work. So if you can do rigid bodies and you can do fluid, well, let's see, maybe you can do cloth. So of course you can do cloth and you can buy cloth and fluid. Again, just taking a lot of these classically separate simulation methodologies and allowing them to interact with each other and you kind of, you, you get the right effect. You know, this is, it just kind of works. One of the really cool things about a lot of this stuff is because it's this unified system, we were able to build all these things and we could like literally just play and experiment. We just try things out and you know, it just, it just works. The, the interaction works out the way you think it will and the visual effects and the interplay between the simulations all play out nicely and they all play great on the GPU. So this one's kind of fun. Um, this is, uh, we just kind of call it the squishy frog. This is a deformable. Um, classically doing rubber or uh, deformable kinds of objects in geometry has been pretty hard. So this is a deformable object. This is a, you know, a little frog guy you can you know, move around. So he squishes, he deforms, he bends, and it kind of all does the right thing. So um, the, uh, that, that first sphere demo that you saw, we, we first did that, we thought that was pretty cool, and then we started playing around with water, and then, you know, as, as is usual, what happens is, you know, um, we'll show it around, and, and then this time I, I was the guy to blame, I'm like, you know what, that's pretty cool, but, you know, the first thing I think of when I think of spheres and then see water after this, hey, could we make water balloons? Has anybody ever seen a real-time water balloon simulation? And they're like, uh, uh, I don't know, well, let's try. So literally, you know, they whipped it up, and it turns out that you can make water balloons. It all just kind of works, right? So you've got balloons, they're filled with water, there's pressure, they react, you know, they pop holes, they leak, they squirt. You can just have the simulations work how you think they should work. They bounce around with each other. Depending on the hole that you pop, sometimes they rip open, sometimes they squirt. Um, 
it, it hurts your brain a lot. It's hard. That these are really complex problems, and having a, a, a some core fundamental technology that can allow this level of cross simulation interplay and this level of realism is just it's pretty cool stuff. Pretty exciting stuff. So I can't wait to see what folks are going to do with this next year. Pretty awesome. So this is Flex. This is one of the first technologies we're announcing again coming to PhysX uh, next year.